Hello. Today I would like to talk to you about DaVinci Migration. This is the topic that is relatively uncommon for entrepreneurship research and I think this is a problem because there are serious reasons for us to be concerned about DaVinci Migration. But why should we care about it? First, typically when we try to understand entrepreneurial processes within the region, we like to think about new venture creation or firm failure. And this is understandable, right? Because that affects the, the entrepreneurial talent that you see applied within a specific locale. But in addition to new venture creation and failure, migration of firms from outside into the region or out migration from this region elsewhere affects the stock of entrepreneurial talent that is gainfully employed. So as policymakers, we definitely should pay attention to this new source of entrepreneurial talent. Reason number two is that, uh, well, we all know that new firms are prone to failure. Four out of five firms will fail within five years, uh, according to the statistics. Migrant firms are different. They have already withstood the test of time in their original location. So if you can attract more firms than you lose, you're probably gonna get higher quality ventures that are less likely to fail, and, and the benefits that they bring with them are going to spill over to the people living within this specific region. They do not require any specific uh, tax, preferential tax treatment or, or any sort of support from local authorities, so all the benefits they bring are free to the region. So this is why uh, you want to encourage migration of firms into your uh, location. And finally, what if the reasons that make a region attractive to venture migration are different from the reasons that make the region attractive to startups. Which of these two would you like to support? Which factors would you want to emphasize? So I think uh, you have to have a pretty good understanding of venture migration, all the factors that affect it, before you can answer this specific question. Uh, in terms of uh, the, the dynamics of venture migration, most of what we know comes from economic geography and not from entrepreneurship research. Uh, first of all, uh, the rates of venture migration are actually comparable to startup rates. So every year, anywhere between 1.5% to 8% of existing firms move, which is comparable to uh, new venture creation rates. Typically, smaller firms move, not larger ones. Larger ones tend to expand to new locations while keeping the original ones. Smaller ones simply move from place A, A to place B. Most venture migration tends to be local. People move within 30 miles of the original location. And uh, what's important, but is often ignored, is uh, policymakers actually have a better chance of affecting preferences of migrating ventures than new firms. Because new firms typically are created simply where the entrepreneur himself or herself resides. So people who create new firms do not think strategically about where to start ventures. They simply do it out of convenience. Firms that choose to move obviously have strategic reasons to do that. So if there are any mechanisms at your disposal, if there are any tools you can employ to make your region more attractive, migrating firms and not startups would probably pay more attention to what you're trying to do as a policymaker. From the economic geography research, there are three groups of uh, I guess conceptual uh, reasons for why firms may choose to relocate. The main one, the main school of thought is the neoclassical approach. Here, firms are believed to, uh, so initially when the firm is created, even if it is created in a place which maximizes its profitability, over time conditions change. So the firm is unlikely to occupy the place that maximizes profitability over long periods of time. So as time goes by, as conditions change in neighboring regions, it may be a smart choice to move elsewhere where the spatial margins of profitability are higher. So this is a classic uh, optimization, profit maximization move, and there's a lot of research that talks about it. Uh, school of thought number two talks about the behavioral reasons uh, behind firm relocation, and here the idea is uh, basically as, as the firm exists, it is, as it accumulates experience, it also gathers information that it did not have initially. And as it starts gathering more information about neighboring uh, regions, 
its behaviors, such as its locational choice, might change. So it helps explain some of what we see, but does not offer necessarily much actionable advice. Finally, there is a third group of uh, arguments, the so-called institutional thinking. And the idea here is that firms may actually negotiate with local authorities for specific preferential treatment. Lower taxes, uh, maybe, maybe access to particular infrastructure. Uh, unfortunately, it does not necessarily work for smaller firms. It is usually the prerogative of larger firms to negotiate with the governments. So uh, it is not exactly relevant to the small firm context. So in this specific paper, I want to look at uh, this classic, uh, neoclassical uh, reasoning for understanding firm relocation, but also at the mainstream entrepreneurship research that thinks about entrepreneurship as an axis of individual and opportunity. And based on these uh, distinct literatures, I will formulate a set of hypotheses that may explain venture relocation and see which of those reasons confer are confirmed by uh, the data I was able to collect. So in terms of neoclassical uh, hypotheses, uh, regions can try to come up with what is known as anchoring strategies. They try to make themselves more attractive to relocating firms by lowering taxes, such as property taxes and income taxes. And this is understandable, right? Because taxes usually increase the cost of running a business. So you want to make yourself more attractive, you try to lower those. At the same time, there is this uh, sales tax, which is common for the United States, not necessarily for some other economies, which uh, would probably affect the preferences of relocating firms differently. Sales tax does not constitute a cost of running a business. Customers, when they're making their purchase, they're not even aware, oftentimes, of tax rates or, or how much the tax is going to be, because it is added to the price ex post after the sale has been closed. So, and uh, with very few exceptions, such as gasoline, so that, there you see the price, which includes sales tax right away. What it means is that the seller gets to collect sales tax amount from customers, but it does not have to repay uh, the authorities right away. It pays them on a monthly basis, or sometimes even just twice a year which means that for at least a month, and sometimes for six months, it has this free source of capital with which it can fund the development of its business. So it actually, paradoxically, sales tax could be seen as a beneficial kind of instrument that uh, local authorities may employ to make their uh, regions attractive to uh, relocating firms. When it comes to the entrepreneurship literature, so this individual opportunity and access, with respect to individual, uh, two things may be of importance. One is if a venture has a high percentage of unemployed people. Obviously, it guarantees access to low cost or lower cost labor for entrepreneurs. So if they want to take advantage of lower cost of labor, they could move into this region. At the same time, if the region has above average supply of highly qualified labor, say people with higher education, that may be attractive to some businesses as well, especially the more sophisticated ones, the ones that rely on highly qualified workforce for the operation. So in this sense, both high unemployment rates and higher uh, education levels, educational attainment within the region could be seen as positive factors driving the in-migration of firms. And then finally, the opportunities part of this individual opportunity nexus. In the entrepreneurship literature, we distinguish between innovative opportunities and arbitrage opportunities. And typically, most of our empirical research looks at innovation. So uh, I do fully expect innovative opportunities to be positively related to the attractiveness of region, of the region for migrating firms. But also arbitrage opportunities, those are uh, that, are, that do not imply creation of new means and frameworks that are simply about replication or imitation uh, or efficiency improvement under the already existing uh, set of technologies. Those I expect to also be positive predictors of entrepreneurial migration. And uh, 
so two hypotheses imply this positive relationship between the two kinds of entrepreneurial opportunities and migration of firms into the region. How do I test it? First, uh, I collect obviously the, this uh, uh, secondary data from uh, counties within the state of Ohio. So Ohio is a very representative state in terms of its economic condition within the United States uh, on most metrics of entrepreneurship, be that new venture creation or social venture creation, uh, it is positioned right in the middle of the US, so uh, like 24th state out of 50, 25th, something like that. It has uh, 88 counties uh, which comprise uh, urban regions, uh, suburban regions, rural regions, different industries are represented, uh, represented. so it is a good approximation of the country economy as a whole. And then at the same time, it has also been used in cross-country comparisons. So uh, the state of Ohio uh, has been compared to countries such as Sweden. So it is believed that it is representative of the US conditions at large. Um, I have used multiple secondary data sources to build up my data set. So the majority, the bulk of my data comes from the Ohio Department of Development. Some of it is attributable to the Bureau of Workers' Compensation. Some of it comes from the U.S. Census Bureau uh, and, you know, all those uh, other agencies that you could expect to find this uh, kind of data, Department of Taxation. To uh, operationalize venture migration, my key dependent variable, unfortunately, it is not tracked directly by any of the agencies, so I have to infer it indirectly. I look at the change in the number of active businesses within the county that cannot be attributed to new venture creation or firm failure. So if there's a change that cannot be explained by these two, it means that the ventures either have come from elsewhere or moved to other places. And uh, I, I look at it as a rate, so I look at the change in the number of active businesses over all active businesses in the prior year. So this is consistent with uh, some of the research that's uh, out there. For the independent variables, uh, tax rates obviously are easy to obtain from the Department of uh, Taxation. Some of it has to be aggregated to the level of the county because sometimes it's individual cities and not counties that establish uh, tax rates. But by and large, there are no surprises there. Things like unemployment rate, educational attainment, those come from uh, the Department of Development and the U.S. Uh, Census Bureau. Uh, innovative opportunities, uh, that comes from uh, NBER uh, data set, this National Bureau of Economic Research. And then for arbitrage opportunities, uh, I use the method explained in uh, Anakin, Vincent, and uh, Auto. It's fairly complicated uh, computationally, so uh, I would just refer you to the Small Business Economics 2011 paper where it is explained in detail. And I also control for a number of things uh, that could explain venture migration outside of those hypothesized factors. So things like population migration, business century rate, uh, per capita income, uh, high school dropout rate, industry intensity, and also the status of a border county, because uh, being on the border with another state could uh, somehow complicate calculations, right? We may have we may deal with cross-state migration and not within state migration. So I felt it was important to control for that. Um, what do I see after running my regression? So obviously it's a panel data set, so I used uh, econometric models with uh, autoregression uh, to arrive at my estimates. I see that most of my hypotheses are supported with two important exceptions. Exception number one is that innovative opportunities that I expected to positively affect uh, attractiveness of region for migrating firms do not seem to explain anything. So obviously some ventures do move after innovative opportunities, but by and large, if you look at the processes throughout the state of Ohio over these years, you see that firms move after a low hanging fruit of arbitrage and not innovation. And this is very significant. Surprise number two is that property tax rate uh, rates, which I expected to be 
negatively related to uh, region attractiveness to migrant firms are actually positively related, positively and significantly related to venture migration. And uh, after consulting with some uh, specialists, I think I have the explanation. Uh, typically, the counties, the money they get from, uh, they collect as, as part of property tax rates, um, uh, taxes, they use the money to develop infrastructure within the region. So migrant firms, even if they have to pay this higher property tax rate, get access to superior infrastructure, which is very important. But what's even more likely to happen is the firms that are migrating are not capital intensive firms. They are labor intensive firms, which means they don't have much assets, they do not have high property taxes, yet they get advantage of the beneficial uh, infrastructural investments that proper higher property tax rates make possible. So otherwise, everything is as expected. Income tax rate is negatively related to migration. Uh, sales tax rates are positively related to migration. Again, this seems to be a win-win situation for migrating firms and local authorities. Unemployment rate and uh, educational attainment are both positively related to migration, which gives hope to uh, regions of different kind, right? And just probably different kind of ventures they attract, but ultimately everything contributes to economic development, so that's a good thing. And um, I think this is probably the first attempt to introduce this venture migration thing into the entrepreneurship research. We see that the factors that are believed to be important for entrepreneurship scholars explain venture migration over and above what economic geographers do, so this is important. And uh, finally, as just an illustration point, I wanted to show sort of the, the, the county distribution within the state of Ohio. So uh, the shaded counties are the recipient counties. They're the ones where uh, entrepreneurs go to. The white counties, the unshaded counties, are the ones where entrepreneurs move out of. As you can see, most counties lose ventures. And there's just a few that seem to attract ventures consistently. You also see those red stars. These are the counties that host major cities that have at least 100,000 people uh, population. And most of them, with exception of the Hamilton County that hosts uh, Cincinnati, are donor counties. So they lose ventures. So uh, I think as a policymaker, you want to be uh, you want to be really curious, trying to figure out what these shaded counties do differently that seems to attract ventures so well. And uh, with that, uh, I thank you for your attention, and I hope you will find this topic of venture migration a, a good and uh, high potential topic for entrepreneurship research. Thank you.